Australia's mining giant BHP Group has put down nearly $39 billion to try to scoop up its smaller London-based rival Anglo-American. Anglo, which owns mines in Chile, South Africa, Brazil and Australia, said its board is reviewing the proposal which would create the world's biggest copper miner. Uh, this comes amid a scramble for metals to power the global shift to clean energy. Well, let's talk to uh, Joshua Mahoney. Uh, Chief Market Analyst at uh, Scope Markets. Joshua, welcome back. Good to see you. If, if this takeover goes, uh, goes ahead, I mean, it would create one of the mining industry's largest deals in donkey's years. How significant is it? Yes, yeah, certainly. Look, ultimately, the mining industry generally does rely on uh, sort of companies coming together rather than constantly having to expand uh, the footprint of the firm uh, organically. So big deals have happened in the past, but it does feel like there's been a significant lull. Of course, the likes of BHP Billiton actually came about through a significant merger in itself. But this really counts towards uh, one of the biggest deals in the last over a decade really and it comes at a time when people within the UK are really worrying about this idea that businesses are undervalued in the FTSE 100. Well certainly there is a feeling that Anglo-American is undervalued and it feels like it's a prime target for what is going to be a, a significant theme going forward in terms of the electrification, uh, the introduction of EVs, wind farms and the like really reliant on copper. So copper is really at the, at the forefront of this deal. Why does BHB want to own Anglo-American? Well, ultimately, this is a case of diversification uh, to some extent. I mean, it, also, it does add on to their iron ore assets, which is essentially makes up the, the bulk of BHP's uh, revenues. That's the, the main determinant. Um, but like I said, copper is really a big play. Anyone that's a, that's a keen uh, commodities trader will have noticed that over the past month, two months, we've seen a massive rip in terms of copper prices up 23% since the February low. And that could just be the beginning because this idea that we're going to see a big expansion in terms of electric vehicles and the electrification around the world really is going to rely on copper as being central to that theme. So it's getting ahead of the curve. Yes, we've seen a strong rally in terms of copper of late, um, but certainly there's an expectation that that could continue for, for years ahead. And that means that BHP it can really start to get into a position where because they, uh, if this deal went ahead, uh, would be controlling 10% of the global copper supply, then they would be in a much better position to also be able to determine uh, exactly the prices that are being paid for it and also drive down costs uh, by creating a much bigger company at a time when, of course, everyone has been focusing on trying to drive down costs given the, the rise in inflation and wages that have gone with it. And what do the markets uh, make of this? How have they uh, reacted? Well, as is often the case when you see takeover bids or stories around it, the company that's being taken over suddenly sees this massive appreciation as people think that they're going to get a significant windfall. Bear in mind that the offer came in at around 30% higher than uh, the price prior to this spike that we've seen today. Uh, well, the share price has risen 16%, so there's still some concern that maybe it won't go through. Um, but there's also the flip side of it where the BHP uh, shareholders are looking at around about a 3% loss on the day as they're concerned that perhaps the company is paying out a lot of money and there's a lot of concern that potentially it's going to take a, a meaningful amount of time for them to take advantage of that. So people are always concerned about a company becoming overly bloated. Joshua, good to see you. Thanks for your time. Joshua Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets.